In this video, I will talk about how to do principal component analysis and factor analysis in R. Before you watch this video, please make sure that you have watched my other two videos called Principal Component Analysis and Factor Analysis, which is the lecture, and Principal Component Analysis and Factor Analysis example. Click on the link below the video to go to the website and find more information as well as the handouts, data and programs uh, on this topic. So I have opened up my program here uh, in RStudio and I have already executed it. Um, so we will do principal component analysis and factor analysis. Uh, the first thing you need to do is read in the data and this is the data file PCA underscore GSP and then um, you can take a look at the data. Uh, the variables that we will be using are 13 of them and they're called agriculture, mining, construction and so on. So I'm going to take a look at the data. This is the file. Um, this is the observations and it's state level data. We have 50 states in the US uh, here and these are the 13 variables agriculture, mining, construction, manufacturing and so on and we're trying to summarize these variables using as few as possible principal components or factors. Okay, so um, this would be the x variables and I'm using cbind command to put them together. So in your program the only thing that you need to change is read in your data set here and then put your x variables in here and then you're ready to go. The rest of the program should work um, with your uh, data set. So the first thing to do is sum, uh, summarize the data, the x variables and you can see these are the means and this is share of uh, gross state product and one thing you can see is that for the mean we have very different uh, means the range is pretty high uh, so this is not like a one to seven question where you can use correlation um, in covariance but rather you should use correlation because the variable magnitudes are quite different uh, from one variable to the next so if you if you look at the correlation matrix here's correlation of x uh, you can see here one across the diagonal of course and then you have actually kind of low correlations. Um, there's some that are a bit higher like here and here, um, but many of them are kind of low. So that may not be a very good justification of using principal component analysis if the data don't, are, aren't very highly correlated. So we are looking for this high correlation to apply principal component analysis. So, but I will proceed anyway to show you the example. So here's the principal component analysis and how you call the commands. You use uh, principal components. You put here x are the variables, scores equal true, and correlation equals true because we're going to be using correlation instead of covariance. And then you can summarize the results. And this is the summary that we have here. And you can see the standard deviation of each of the components. So again we have 13 components because we have um, 13 original variables and so the first component explains a lot of um, the proportion of variance that the first component explains is 25 percent and the second component explains 17 percent and so cumulative 24 plus 17 is 42 percent and the third one explains 15%, so cumulatively they explain 57% uh, and so on. So a question that we have here is how many um, factors usually we, uh, or components we want to retain. And you can look at the eigenvalues, which is basically this number here, the standard deviation squared. And we want those eigenvalues to be above 1 because that means they explain at least as much vari of variation as the original variables. So we see the first five components would have those eigenvalues above 1 
and you need to decide how many to use. Here I'm using three, but you could use five of them. Okay, and so notice that with all the variation that we have here in the data, all 13 components actually explain the full variation in the data. Okay, so the next thing to do is you can calculate the loadings, the principal component loadings, and this is accomplished by either using loadings of PCA1, which is the results that we got from the principal components, or you can use PCA um, dollar sign loadings, which produces actually exactly the same result here. So these are the different components that we have here, and these are the loadings. These are the original 13 variables, so again, we see that there are 13 components. And these are the loadings, uh, and R here has suppressed some of the values uh, if they're very small. I think R uses a cutoff of 0.1 or something like that. They're not even shown. So what we're looking for here is to see as few of these variables as possible loading very strongly on the components. And these numbers here represent the correlations between the component and the original variable. Okay, so um, one thing that we can do now is um, look at the screen plot of the eigenvalues and this is accomplished by using plot of PCA1 and I've already executed that so I'm going to look it up here so these this is the um, the result that we have here so these are the component one two three four uh, five you can see they have uh, eigenvalues above one so we should retain five or I'm thinking maybe three since they kind of drop off after after the third one and these are kind of closer to one. Um, so I'm going to use three components um, for, um, for the rest of the analysis or, or three factors. Okay, another way in which you can uh, do a screen plot is by using a screen plot. You put the results here uh, of the principal component analysis type equals line so instead of a bar graph we are going to get a line and put main uh, equals screen plot as the title and if I execute this line this is what we're going to get which is the way we think about screen plot usually um, more as a line graph rather than a bar graph so again we see that uh, we should be using perhaps five components. If we're looking at this cutoff here, we have a one, two, three, four, five components. So this is the first one, that's the eigenvalue of it, that's the eigenvalue of the second one, and so on. Or you can decide to cut it off after the third one and forget about these last two components. Okay, uh, next thing we can do is uh, look at the biplot of the score variables. And if we execute this command, this is what we get, and that's a little bit of a messy graph here. But um, we can actually plot. Um, these are the original. Um, these are the components one and components two. These are um, actually the variables. Um, these are. I'm sorry. These are the original variables that we have, and how they line up on the component space. And the numbers right here that we have, um, these are actually the number of observations. Um, so these are the states. So here on one graph, we have the first two components out of three that we estimated. Uh, and then we have all the original variables and then all the observations. So everything is on here. So you can see like, for example, mining right here loads very strongly on the first component you know that that value is um, um, actually we can see what that value is so I'm gonna go back to the uh, so mining uh, the loading on the first component is 0.47 and that is 0.47 right here somewhere and on the second component, it loads very small. So that's why you see like how it's close to zero on the second component. 
Um, on the other hand, we have, let's see which one, government. Government, we have loading on the first component as 0.28 and on the second one as 0.36. So 0.28 is here, I have 0.28 is right about here and 0.36 on the first one would be 0.36 on the first one would be somewhere here. So, so that's where the government is. And actually, if you look at the um, principal component scores, these are how the observations are, are going to load up. So let's take a look at the score of the components, and you can do this by using PCA1 dollar sign score, and we can see the first 10 observations of the data. And if you execute this, we have, um, these are the first 10 observations. So now we are looking back into, these are the data set and these are uh, the observations one to 10. We have 50 of them because they're by states. And these are now the components that you can use instead of the original variables. And these are now the component scores. So you see like how observation number two has a very high score on the first component and this is where observation uh, number two is as an outlier. Same is true for, ob for observation number 50. So here in R, all of these um, things are combining in one graph, okay? The next thing you can do is actually uh, rotate some of the um, uh, some of the loadings uh, and that's accomplished by Varimax and Promax but for me these commands didn't work so I I right now protected them so I need to work a little bit more on that so this was on principal component analysis factor analysis is very similar um, how many factors you decide to retain is the same uh, logic as uh, with principal component analysis, that's why I've retained three. It's perfectly good to also retain five factors. So you use um, factor analysis here. You put X are the variables that you want to calculate to do factor analysis on and put the number of factors equal three. And this is what you get here as a result. And you have in um, Instead of talking about what percent of the variation is explained, here we're talking about the uniqueness of the factors. And here you have that, say, agriculture is very high, uh, communication is very high, and, and government is very high, and so on. And so here you have either the uniqueness being high, which means a specific factor associated with that variable or the communality is low which means the variation that's explained by the factors is low on on these because there's a um, the communality and the uniqueness actually sum up to one okay so these are now the factor loadings, um, which are interpreted similarly to the principal component loadings, but as you can see, they're a little bit different because they use a different model. And you can see uh, here, the first factor has high loading on uh, mining, on transportation and energy. The second one has high loadings on manufacturing, trade, uh, the two types of trade and inverse loading on the real estate. So when you have your own data set, hopefully very few variables are going to line up with the factors and this way you can name your factors based on the variables that you use to create these factors. Okay, so this is what um, you need to know here about the factor analysis. Now we can do a rotation. Uh, everything is the same as above except that you could put rotation equals very max. And these are the results that you get here. Okay, and if you look at the results, they're just 
very much the same as uh, as as before. Uh, but in general, a very max rotation um, is an orthogonal rotation that that the goal is to have as few variables loading on the factors as possible. Uh, and then the second factor needs to be orthogonal to the first one. Okay, and um, and I think that's uh, pretty much all I had to say about factor analysis. Um, thank you for watching.